my old boss, Ben Graham, talked about having a partner named Mr. Market. And Mr. Market, you know, when you own a stock, Mr. Market comes around every day, let's say it's, let's say it's General Motors, and he names you a price at which you can either buy more from him or you can sell to him. Mm -hmm. Now imagine having a McDonald's stand and you, you got one partner and that partner comes around and someday they're building a Burger King across or a Kentucky Fried and he gets pessimistic, so he names a low price because he's afraid you're going to sell to him. So you buy from him. And other days he comes around, there's a big long line of cars in the drive-in. The other guy's shut down across the street, so he thinks he better name a high price because you, uh, otherwise you might buy from him. So you get this very erratic partner who gives you a price every day, which you can ignore if you wish. But if he does says something silly, you take advantage of him. Yep. Now, what kind of a partner do you want then? You want some psychotic drunk, you know, because <laughs> you, you want some guy that know wanders some all over the place, you know, yep. and gets yep. all enthused and all depressed. Yep. But you never forget that you're buying the business, and he is the guy that's wandering around in a crazy way. Vol volatility is the friend of the... Uh, I love volatility. If no stock ever moved around very much, it would be impossible to make any real money. Volatility is your friend. You can turn it into your enemy. I mean, if you get worried when your stocks go down or you, or, or you feel like you ought to rush in and buy things because they've gone up, volatility is your enemy. But if volatility means that a very good company someday will, on some day will sell at X and sometime later it will sell at two-thirds of X and another time it will sell at one and a half times X, you will get very rich if you can just keep figuring out what X is. And volatility is, is what will enable you to make a lot of money. So any, anytime people get upset about volatility, they, they don't really understand uh, the nature of markets and how they should be thinking about them. The more volatile the market, the more money we'll make at Berkshire. But stocks, you put your finger on it, because they're so liquid, people think they have to make a decision every day because they can make a decision, and it's crazy. Also, there's a propensity of people to gamble. Yeah. I mean, when I was 21, I went on my honeymoon. My wife was 19. We went through Las Vegas, and we, it was 1952, and we stopped at the Flamingo, which was then kind of a motel-like structure. Yeah. And I went in, and I saw all these well-dressed people, who had, most of whom had come a thousand miles or so, and they'd come to do stupid things. <laughs> and I looked around, and I thought, boy, am I going to get rich. <laughs> you know? I mean, imagine going a thousand miles to, to throw a bunch of dice where you know you're going to lose money over time if you keep doing it. Yeah, it's and the, the thrill. That it's, and those people are making decisions in the stock market, and they set prices, and all you have to do is every now and then look at one and say, wait, that doesn't make any sense in terms of where it's selling. I mean, people were paralyzed uh, at the end of 2008. I mean, they were just yep. plain scared. Treasury bills went to a negative yield. Imagine that. Yep. I mean, you, you, you could put the money under the mattress and get a higher yield than you got on a Treasury bill. Yep. When that's going on, you got to be out there with a great big tub. When it's raining gold, you do not want to be out with a teaspoon. Yep. You want to be out there with a yep. big so, ladle. You know? <laughs> so I'm never going to forget that last five seconds, for the record. <laughs> it's just etched in my mind already, I can tell. Uh, Other people would look at it and say, well, the stock hasn't done anything for a couple of years. Well, who cares whether the stock's done anything for a couple of years? I mean, I don't care. I don't know whether my farm has done anything for a couple of years. I know what it can produce. So you've got to look at it as a productive asset and not as something that wiggles around on a piece of paper. Do you get a feeling like when, when 2008 or other times where the market's just been rationally sold off, is this, a, is this a golden gut feeling or is it just, you know, is it all of a sudden you look at a bunch of numbers and it clearly goes, how, does, how do you come to the point where saying that, that day that you call it whatever, raining gold, how do you know it's a raining gold day? Well, you don't know that it won't rain more gold the next day. I was early. Okay. Uh, the market hit bottom in March of 2009, and I invested a lot of money. So you never know what the market's going to do. I have the faintest idea what the market's going to do next week or next month, and I don't think about it. I don't know what farm prices are going to do next month. You know, I mean, I, it just, you've got to focus on where it's likely to be in five years or 10 years. And, and you, you can't predict market fluctuations. And if you think you can, you know, you get in trouble. So I don't, that day, in September, when Goldman Sachs called me and they said, we need $5 billion, I might have been able to drive a much better deal the next day or the next week or next month. I just looked at the deal that was being offered to me, and I said, this makes sense. And I don't worry about the fact I could have made a better deal yeah. a week later. You need to be able to look at the facts about a business, about an industry, and evaluate a business unaffected 
by what other people think. And that is very difficult for most people. I mean, most people have a sometimes a herd mentality, which can, under certain circumstances, develop into a delusion, into delusionary behavior. I mean, you saw that in the internet craze and so on. So, if I ever write a book, it's going to be called "Why Smart People Do Dumb Things." Uh, <laughs> my partner says that it should be autobiographical, but I. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, what you're looking for is some way to get one good idea a year, you know, and then and then write it to its full potential. And that's very hard to do in an environment where people are shouting prices back and forth every five minutes and shoving reports under your nose and all that. Because Wall Street makes its money on activity. You make your money on inactivity. You know, I mean, if everybody in this room trades their portfolio around every day with every other person, you know, you're all going to end up broke, and 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 the intermediary is going to end up with all the money. On the other hand, if you all own stock in a, in a group of average businesses and just sit here for the next 50 years you'll end up with a fair amount of money and your broker will be broke. So his act, his activity is, 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 he's like a doctor who gets paid on how often he gets you to change pills, I mean, basically. I mean, if he gives you one pill and it cures you the rest of your life, you know, he's got one sale, one transaction, and, and that's it. But if he can convince you that changing pills every day is the way to great health, uh, It'll be great for him and the prescriptionists, and, and you'll be out a lot of money, and you won't be any healthier. You'll be a lot worse off financially. So it, you want to stay away from any environment that stimulates activity, and Wall Street would have the effect of, of doing that. Uh, Don't do anything in life where if somebody asks you the reason why you're doing it, the answer is everybody else is doing it. I mean, if you just cancel that, as a rationale for doing any activity in life, you'll live a better life, whether it's at the stock market or, or any place else. Uh, I've, I've seen more dumb things, and sometimes even you know illegal things, but justified on the basis of everybody else is doing it. And you don't need to do what everybody else is doing it. It's, it's maddening during the internet craze, for, uh, craze, you know, when the bubble was going on, and here's your neighbor who's got an IQ 50 points below you, you know, and he's making all this easy money, and your wife is telling you, you know, this jerk next door is making money, you know, and you're smarter than he is, and why aren't you making money? Well, you have to, for, you have to forget about all that sort of thing. You just have to do what works, what would you understand, and if you don't understand it, and somebody else is doing it, don't get envious or anything of the sort, you know. What? Pardon me? Do you get butterflies? Do you no, get nervous? No, no, never. Never? Never. Sleepless nights? No. No, if I'm not, I'm not going to do something that causes me to stay, not sleep at night, no. No, if, if you're going to have sleepless nights, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be investing. I mean, you don't know what you're doing on that stock. Right. No. no, I sleep like a baby. <laughs> <laughs>